So today uh, we're, t we're touching on uh, racial discrimination and how it affects people of minorities. I'm here with Tristan and we're going to talk about uh, racial discrimination. So Tristan, how has racial discrimination affected you in your day to day life? I feel racial discrimination in my life, I haven't seen as much of it, if not any, and I have not exactly seen far too many people I have come across a few instances of racial uh, discrimination I have not come across overly discriminative uh, things. So would you say like racial discrimination is one of one of if not the the uh, the more I would say shown problems of you know us right now you know of the of of, of us of us as the generation that we are would you would you say that you know racial discrimination is one of our biggest uh, problems or faults? There is a lot of problems where race is brought into things where it does not need to be. Um, that could be in job applications. Um, that could be just in general talking in public speech and whatnot. But that can sometimes even just be mistaking racism in places where it's not actually at. Or seeing things that aren't actually racist or discriminative. But there still is those times no matter where they are, how often you might mistake them for something else. I agree, and I, 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 but I think my opinion on it is a little differently because, strictly because, you know, as a light-skinned man in America, you know what I'm saying, it's a, uh, it's a little, it's a little weirder for me because, uh, people, you know, people of race that are in a race debate want me to pick either side. Like I have a common ground on either side of that debate, but in reality, I I don't I don't have you know a side on any one of that debate, and I don't feel a special way for any one of those things. You know, cause you know, as you know, cause you know, my mom is the single mom, so I've been living with her was his like you know 18 years or whatever, that may be. Um, but. She, you know, I don't want to let her down and like choose one side or the other. So I feel like I feel like there's a lot of pressure on biracial kids to like favor one side over the other when it should just be, you know, preference how you feel at the end of the day. But I feel like that severely gets overlooked by just just a sheer amount of racial debates or idealistic people that already think that I should think this way yeah there's a lot of people in the world trying to convince others of various different racial problems or discriminating problems and some are correct some are wrong but it's going to be a little harder for a lot of other people to see through all the garbage and find what actually is true because with our current day technology a lot of what can be said and what is said can be faked or not true so would you do you think people look at you because you're a white male no i don't think so i don't think i've had that problem yet. but that problem could always arise later on and if or even if it does arise how would you how would you want to approach it and how should somebody approach it i feel the way people should approach racism is try not to talk about it because if you don't talk about it eventually our generation the next generation after us will not know of it because nobody has talked about it in such a long time so no one will ever have that problem again because if we keep talking about it, there will be these stereotypes and racist debates and racist speech that is continuously pumped out day after day. So you feel like it is it is best just for the whole debate to be thrown away, like the whole idealistic way of thinking that if we you know if we keep talking about it that that it will never really subside. 
So my my real my real question is in that line of thinking, do you ever think that it may just make the the people that are already racist against a minority would when do you think they would just hide it more than it actually going away? Would you think that hypothetically when wouldn't they just not show it as much as they they did before because it's not socially acceptable? That could be a way of thinking about it or a thing that could potentially happen. But the way I see it is, eventually, if these racist people, we just keep talking about it, and it will never go away if we keep talking about it, but if we let it die, eventually those that are racist or discriminative, they will pass away and no longer be a problem or a ability for the racism or discriminative things to respawn and come back. Oh, okay, I, so I see the line of thought, and I appreciate you sharing your core values with me, and from here, I'll switch to somebody else. I appreciate the thoughts. I'm switching to somebody else. Hello? Yeah, yeah. So I'm speaking with Andrew Acosta. So Andrew Acosta, I w I just touched on the 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 subject I'm going to hit you with on somebody else. So racial discrimination, how has it affected you as a man in America? Realistically, it hasn't affected me too much, but it does somewhat offend me when someone doesn't consider me Mexican because I am Mexican but when someone said or someone someone hears that I don't speak Spanish they're like oh you're not Mexican you're so I do get offended by that so how would how would one go about it to not offend you in such ways just because their core beliefs is different from yours um anyone can Anyone basically can consider what they deem is, I guess, Mexican or true Mexican or whatever they go about it. Me personally, I truly do not care. It doesn't matter what can, uh, I guess, labels me ex mex Mexican. I'm Mexican. That's it. Doesn't nothing change with that. So you said that you didn't appreciate that people didn't value the other sides of you. Were. You so. Does it make you feel like you're you're not does it make, ever make you feel like you're not part of that culture because they don't accept you as that culture? Um sometimes I do feel I guess left out in a way like I feel like I wish I was more in tune with my uh Mexican culture but I it doesn't like negatively affect me or not. So I don't really mind. But if I was given the opportunity to learn more about it, yeah, I would take it. So I I feel like I feel like you have a really valid point on, you know, that because I, I, I see it to this day that, you know, some people just simply choose not to value the other people, even knowing they're the same race as that person, just because they have a darker skin complexion. Because do you do you think that you would get the same amount of people believing that you're not this if you had a darker skin complexion? Um, I would think so. I, because let's see, my sister, my sister is a lot more tan than I am, so she gets a lot more. Oh, you're Mexican comments, and a whole lot more, or a whole lot less. Oh, you're white comments. Me and my little sister, on the other hand, we have the opposite. Place. We have Oh, you're white, and then people are like, "Oh, you're Hispanic." Like, they're questioning it, like they're surprised that, that even if our, our individual skin tone doesn't represent it. So, I feel like I feel like you're the way the way you go about it is probably the most mature way I've heard so far. You know what I'm saying? The fact that you can think objectively and you can come with constructive criticism and how you know it could it it can affect somebody of of lesser 
lesser feelings, you know what I'm saying? Somebody that, you know, could hypothetically wear their heart on their sleeve versus somebody that, you know, simply doesn't care how they feel either or. So what would be one word of advice to leave off? What words of encouragement you would give to somebody in your same situation? Um, realistically, you shouldn't care what other people think about how you should represent in your own culture. If they don't. If this is your lifestyle. You should just live it how you want. Your life, your way of living. Like no matter how you categorize it, you are who you are. You don't need to show off or to prove anything to anyone else. And with that note, that is the end of the podcast.